I don't want to do an intro today. As is. Thanks. Can I have a cloth napkin? Yeah, this looks great. Thank you. I don't want to do an intro. Should do maybe like um, a little cooking review of these delicious Asian noodles you made me. Hello, take your shoes off, tigers and goblins. <laughs> Boppers are, the glass and boppers are people who are fans of mine, could include the podcast, while the TYSO goblins are like, all right, <clears throat> Betty, tell me what to, what, tell me, tell me what to say. I just want to thank all the people from Patreon who came along when I was doing my Q&A. I just want to thank all the people from Patreon who came along when I was doing my Q&A. And who wrote to you afterwards? And who wrote to me afterwards. I'm excited to go back to L.A. It's not easy, is it? This episode of The Listle in Paris is, is very funny. All right. Beautiful. Thank you guys so much for being such loyal fans of Take Your Shoes Off. If you want to join my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash take your shoes off. Follow me on Instagram at Rick Glassman, shoes off pod. Leave some five stars. Go to iTunes. I got to stop telling people to do that. Nice. I could keep telling people to do that. YouTube watchers. You know, give it a like, but also if you'd go over to iTunes and give us a five stars and a comment, it'll really help out. Draw a bopper. Draw a bopper. Draw. Draw a bopper, right. Send me some messages uh, of your bopper drawings. Goblin drawings as well, but I feel like we got the goblin drawing. But I'd love to see your goblins. I would love to see what a bopper would look like. And scoot do bubbity blue. Scoot do. Is that fine? Great. Blubbity blue. Scoot. Everyone, welcome to Please Take Your Shoes Off. I'm joined today by a very special guest. I'm very excited to have him on. I've been trying to get him for a while. Um, he was just pooping, and I said, "What could I could I get you on the pod for a little bit?" And he obliged. So here he is. Come on in, Rick. That's well, new to podcasting. He's got to put the. There he is. Yep, just like that. Perfect. Perfect. These are nice podcast arms. Oh, thanks. Yeah, these 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 are roads. Yep. Road. Let me check 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 our levels here. Would you like headphones? Oh yeah, I guess maybe I'll wear them. Okay. These are mine. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> oh yeah, there we go. How does that sound? Nice. I want to raise you a little. Oh. Yeah, there's a little static in there. A little static. Yeah, that's nice. We can't get rid of the static until uh, we hit an average of 50,000. Uh, <laughs> Listeners, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, okay. So I do an intro. Great. Normally. Great. Are you familiar with podcasts? Yes. And uh, podcast intros? Yes. How would you describe before the podcast the way a podcast intro goes? How w what would you say its purposes and how it should be done? Well, it depends. I think some people these days seem to be doing a lot of ads in the, in the mm. intros. But in general, see, I used to do a pod where we would do the intro after, and then it would be like, "Oh, you're gonna love." We talk about this. We talk about that. Yeah, that's what. That's what. A little it, bit of a, a little bit of a preview of what's what to come. That's what it is. That's yeah. what the, all the intros are. Yeah. Yeah. So, but but what is so? It's a preview to come. A preview to come. A little bit of like, uh, hype. I would say it's sort of like when ba the basketball team is like in in the back, and then someone starts to announce, and they come out the gates. Okay. So could you do me a favor? Uh huh. Uh, I'm gonna play a little uh, out of the gates music. Great. Could you, in case I don't have time, I'm very busy. Of course. To do this intro, I could maybe take it from here. So could you give us a little hype and tell us what this episode has to look forward to? And I could just make that the intro. Great. I'm gonna, here's going to be the intro. Here we go. I think that first I want you to leave space for, I don't know what type of song we'll be putting in, but usually it's going to be like a boom. Dun happens first yeah. yeah yeah maybe you could even score it too okay yeah i'll do a little scoring okay um, let's hear the music first i've never watched <laughs> so that, was, that was really good that was really really good <laughs> yes yeah all right so i'll put that and in coming in there's that voice while the music's going so it's just kind of like it's too much noise it's, but, uh, but we'll only be using the music of it it's not going to be the and this week that's not how podcast intros go right it's right. usually like 
I'm super excited this week. We have so and so with the da da da's, and you know, we got into we got into the apartment living, what it's like to do comedy in L.A. And, and actually, we also had a little soft moment in there too. Yeah, yeah it's always yeah. that. It's always like a couple normal things, and then and yeah, you'd be surprised. We got <laughs> we actually got a little bit deep. Yeah, stick around. But because obviously we don't know everything that's going to be happening today, of course, how you could have we? you have some license, so take it. Great. This is our intro. Ooh, this is my first time I'll have somebody else doing the intro. This is great. Great. Keep in mind, it's starting off with you going. <laughs> I mean, we've already lost every listener. That's the thing. So with that music intro, we've no one's got like everyone's like, oh god, this this hurts. I'm done, and they've moved on. So this is kind of moot at this point. What what the intro is? Um, I couldn't disagree yes. with you more. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. Oh, and it just ends. Anyway, thank you guys. This is our podcast. Uh, today, take your shoes off. We have a great episode in store for you. Uh, we have our guest, Alyssa in Paris, and we just get into it. We talk about streets, cars, pianos, and everything in between. <laughs> Stick around. And of course, thank you to our sponsors, Leather. It's what's on the table. Thank you. Bye bye. Leather, it's what's on the table. That's actually good. Yeah, I just this saw this leather, and I think that. To have a sponsor of leather would be the worst thing you could possibly do. And I don't buy leather anymore. No. What's, what's, what's this? Is this? It's leather. Yeah. Anymore. <laughs> yeah, you got like the main staples and then you're like, now I'm done. It's like, yeah, it's like uh, I'm going vegan after Thanksgiving. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, li- I respect that. There's a few le- things that I found that I really like. I find that laptop cases. Leather. No. What made you think that that's what I was going to say? <laughs> No, laptop cases that are vegan. Yeah, uh, Laptop cases, the ones that I really like, and you don't know me well, but the laptop cases that I really like, they're almost exclusively leather. So now my new laptop, caseless. Wow. Yeah. You've, that's such an extreme jump. You, there's, there's stuff in between. I'm looking. <laughs> I haven't found anything I like. Wow. Yeah. No, I do caseless a lot too. It's so stupid. Every time I do it, I'm like, I shouldn't be doing this. I should have a case because it gets scratched up. I'm like, this is so preventable. You're talking probably about a phone. No, I'm talking about my laptop. Okay. Because I put it in a bag loosely and I like have a big bag with all other stuff in it. And I'm like, why am I risking this? I have why a, are you risking A kombucha because it's just, I, it's, I'm, it's my version of sort of living on the edge. It's like, this is the thrill. Yeah. Yeah. There is something to, there's something about a caseless electronic a phone in particular. Oh my God. Why does it look so much better? It looks so much it's, better. You know what? That's marketing. That's a marketing design where they go, I want people to want to hold it caselessly and then they'll drop it and they'll have to buy a new one. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, what's it called when the, the, they're farting in the air and making us poisoned? The, uh, indigestion. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, uh, crop dusting. Crop, crop trailing. Dusting. Oh, crop dusting. Crop yes, trail. Yes, yes. Crop Crop, crop dusting? Crop dusting. You know what I'm talking about, Of course, though. when you're walking around and you're just no, tooting? No. That's crop Trail. <laughs> the, the, the planes, they say that planes are uh, are trail, you know what I'm talking about, chemtrails. Chemtrails, yes. Do yes, you yes. know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I could guess from what you're saying that, that yes. Yeah, they're like planes are going around and they're giving off like chemicals that make us like horny or tired or wanting to buy, you know, leather or whatever the stuff is. I didn't know that. I didn't know yeah. that they, they were to make us buy into consumerism more. Well, it's, it's uh, you know, I really didn't do my re- research on words before this yeah, podcast. Yeah, me neither. It's too early for words. But you know the things when people are like, oh, they say this thing happened, but did it happen? Yes. What am I talking? What is what is the word I'm looking Conspiracy for? Conspiracy theories. Can I tell you what? And this is something you should know about me. I... I don't like listening to conspiracy theories because mm. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. like if I'll believe anything. Like I'm not an hard sell. It's like if you tell me Elvis is real, I'm like, all right, well, he why? is real. <laughs> no, I don't know. Me- <laughs> I don't know. I think that that's no, he debatable. I don't know. <laughs> Those Rick. videos. That's crazy talk. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think we landed on the moon. I don't think Elvis was real. That's it. My grandma um, has a lot of uh, you know. She ha- don't put hats on the bed these things okay and i adopt them immediately yes. so when she's telling me these things i have to stop her i, I agree no hats on the bed now i know and there's no yeah there's no like logic behind it no. and then now it's just something yeah i believe too i had like i had i live in i'm from seekonk massachusetts and my whole life i never went to the cape because my parents were like the cape 
the traffic to the Cape would be crazy. We're never going to the Cape. I went with my boyfriend last year. It took us 45 minutes. <laughs> and I was like, my whole life, I've been like, I'm not going to the Cape because it's the traffic. And it was 45 minutes away. I would be remiss if I didn't take that opportunity to then tell the audience why I asked, well, where I saw you and asked for you here. And I want to cut to a clip of your impression of your mom. We'll just do that. That's right. fair, right? Yes. I'm going to take your footage. It's a footage. clip of me in the Cape. It's a, yeah. I think it's good. This is a good opportunity to say why I saw you in the Cape having a nice time with your we, boyfriend. We already have the setup. Let's get to the clip. <laughs> I'm telling you, the traffic's terrible. The Cape, this time of year, no, we're not getting in the car. We're staying right here. We have water right around. the. We, we can go to the sink if we want water. I'm not going to the Cape Cod. And we're back. I cut out all the stuff in between, but if you guys saw how obnoxious the direction I'm, thank you. <laughs> you just walked in here. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Blah blah blah. Listen, I need you to look to camera. I'm gonna need you to snap. No, look to camera. Yeah, and I tell you what, I love that. I love direction. I love it. Oh, good, because I, I honestly, I'm not embarrassed, but I'm hot from having to like tell you this stuff. So I'm good. We got it. No, now, yeah. that was fun, but that wasn't what I wanted to show you. Okay, all right. Come on in, put your bags down. Take your shoes off. I just vacuumed. You want a fresca? They're cold. Clean that out. Now it just has pans in it. Take your pants off. I'll throw them in the wash now. Grab the recycling. It's alphabetical order. When's the last time you've been to the dentist? You want to make a BJ's run? Your grandma made you these lentils. Why don't you take them home with you on the train? I took a lot of pictures of sunsets. I want to show you all of them. I got about 300. And we're back. Okay. So while that was playing, yes. I was complaining to you about how hot I am. Yes. And you said, uh, you know what? I'm just going to take my sweatshirt off. And then I, th I I'm looking, I thought you did. And I'm looking at you and the sweatshirt's still on. It's, it's CGI. <laughs> it's just, yeah. You're and you're imagining how I'm imagining it. Yeah. I'm seeing the CGI in, in real time. So that video I s I'm assuming went viral. Um, I assume that because the Twitter numbers are high and uh, a few people sent it to me. So I don't know what that means. Yeah. But I'm sure you noticed something with it, right? Well, yeah, I, I was making them like I've been making them for a while. So there's a whole series of them. There's probably like 10. Mm -hmm. And so I made like a few that did well. And then like that one that's pinned is like the then that one went viral. And then, uh, yeah, that's when I people really responded to that one. And then I just kind of kept making them. Yeah. And uh, why do you think people connect to it? Because everyone has a mom. Most people and, for, you know, totally most and, people. Yeah. And even if people like even if it's not a mom, I think people are like, oh, it's like my grandma or that's my aunt or my dad. Like, I think it's just a it's it's been very cool to see like, oh, we all have a, like someone in our life who's like this no matter where we come from. It's pretty universal. Yeah. Uh, I've worked on some jobs where that I've liked doing and then you have to do EPKs, uh, electronic press kits. It's where, you know, so tell me about your character. Tell me about the show. Tell me about this. Got it. And it's, it's it doesn't make me that uncomfortable because I, I, I don't answer the questions right. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, basically, you do a television show and then there's a, a day or two of press and then 30 different places, YouTube channels that have, get 100 views, you yes, know, like- yes, it, yes. So many people are coming and they're asking you and you have to answer, they ask you the same questions over and over got and over. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yes, 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 yes. It's yes. just very, very difficult. Not only is it difficult to repeat it, but it's difficult because it's like, I, I don't, so why, how do you relate to your character and why do you think that's so relevant right now? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. He's just a boobs, you know, I exactly. say boobs a lot. Yeah. So I caught myself asking you that question, but sincerely wanting to know. Yes. And then I just for a moment had a little bit of, I don't know if it's empathy because I do get what's happening, but it's like, oh yeah, people want to know what it is, but also it takes me out of it. Yes. So did you feel anything when I asked you, like, why do people, do you not care? No, I agree. I feel that that's a proper instinct you have that like, it's definitely a question I get a lot about this character or like why. Yeah. Does it I, suck to answer it? No, I think, I think it, I think it doesn't. I think I'm still... I think I'm still like in it and I'm st like I'm editing one right now. I still right. have a lot of joy in making these. It's still like the most fun. Anytime I have that wig and I'm making them with my mom, it's like the most fun. You make them with your mom? Yeah, she films them. She films every one of them. Yeah. We'll cut to a clip. Don't open that unless I'm around. Come on, you gotta turn these lights off. Racking up the bill. I got plenty. Why don't you take some of these home? Oven's preheated. Gotcha this. Isn't that kind of nice? Because you live in Brooklyn. Just trim the bushes. You like the lawn? You gotta cut. Gotta say, the place looks pretty nice. And we're back. How was that? Was that good? A little too loud? Did I peek? I don't know if you peeked. Well. I never know if someone peeks. Well. George edits the audio. Thank you, George. And he puts a compressor on it. 
George, you know, I'm uh, this is such a mom, my mom thing, but like I'm anytime I hear the name George, I'm like, George, see a Greek boy? I, I, I'm is that pretty, a mom thing? No, it's just a, my family. I feel very like that's when I feel I'm getting older. Where I, like anytime I hear like a ret like Nick, I'm like, oh, Greek. That's is, uh, is are Nick and George Greek names? Yeah, but they're also any name. You know what I mean? It's like there's plenty of Nicks and Georges who are not Greek at all. So it's a really it's a really big leap for me to not know the guy's last name, to not know who he is. He's editing, and to my first thought be like, oh, I wonder if he's Greek. So it seems like Nick. And George are rectangles. Yes. And being Greek is a square. Does that make sense? Right. So, yeah, there's, I would say, maybe cube even. They're rectangles. Being Greek's a cube. They're, there's a little small chance in there. But the, there's a lot of other room in the rectangle. It could be a lot of other things. That's an interesting read on that. Oh, because that was not the way you were. I loved it. Great. I liked it. Great. I Hated it. <laughs> and I'm glad you feel comfortable saying that, Rick. Let, hit me with it. A square a, a, a square sure. is a rectangle. Because uh, uh, a rectangle, the only thing I'm that... I'm dissociating. The I'm only, dissociating. I'm leaving I, 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 my body. I'll get you. I'll get you back. I'll get you back. <laughs> a rectangle, what defines a rectangle is four right angles. That's it. If let's, you have, go, let's go back to the questions about my mom. Okay, nothing, okay, nothing's nothing's okay, worse okay, than this. Okay. Ah, All right. I, I, I Trust me. I think you'll be interested in this. Now, picture this. Four equal sides. No, 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 I was kidding. Well, I'm not, but I'm kidding for doing it. Uh, we'll be right back. <sighs> if you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll certainly find them. And we're back. Do you need a rug? Do I? <laughs> I, I sublet from someone right now <clears throat> who... It's a fully furnished place, and she has so many rugs. Different color. I got a blue rug, a pink rug, all next to each other. It's not my aesthetic at all, but I love it. So I don't need a rug at the moment. When you do, I mean, I mean I, like, where do you think you'll be going? I'd have to say Marshall Rug Gallery, just because they have such an eclectic taste and design and variety and all for a pretty affordable price. It's something happened in your face. Try it again. Okay. Something happened in your face at the end with okay. your eye. Okay, what great. was that? What was that? Um, I think I was I was seizing up. Okay. Yeah. Um, where would I go? I'd have to say Marshall Rug Factory. Why? Because I tell you what, you walk in there and every single rug is more beautiful than the last. Oh, they must be expensive. Absolutely not. You'd be surprised how affordable they are. Call now. That was my idea to actually have my dad put the ugliest rugs first. So as you keep going, they keep getting nicer and nicer. Wow, that's very smart. Yes. And uh, we'll f we're, we're not going to do it again because, mm -hmm. I mean, who has the time? Right. Marshall Rug Gallery, not Factory. <laughs> oh, and, and Factory does sound a lot worse. Yeah, Factory it, Factory imply it, you see the people making it. You and do. it's like, it's probably, you don't want to. Yeah, you're, yeah, Factory. It's, and also like all of a sudden it, there's no, it, there's no art. Like there's nothing. It's very right. Just a Factory functional. is, it's is, like, is, 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 yeah, it's, 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 um, they all look the commercial. Same. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's like I need a lot of rugs fast. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go, go to the factory, factory right? Yeah. If you want a lot of things fast, you go to the cheesecake factory. That's right. Yes. If you want the artistry, you go to the cheesecake gallery. gallery. Exactly. Look I mean, at these pieces of art. Oh, look at, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's my dream gallery. Like, if there was a museum where I could just look at foods I wasn't going to eat but wanted to, that, I would go to that museum every day. Do you like when you go to restaurants and they bring you the cart? <laughs> I haven't had that in a while, but I that's. I used to love that. That was always thrilling when you, that feels like it hasn't happened since I was a kid. And that's like the best way to get people to buy dessert. Because they see it. Because you see it and your kids are like, let me get the chocolate cake. Yeah. You know? yeah. I guess I could see a kid f falling for that. Exactly. But what I see is, like, how long have these been out? Of course. Who's been coughing on this? Of course. And also sometimes they're like plastic. Do you remember that? That mm -hmm. Once they made that leap, it was like, well, now you've lost us. Yeah. There's, a, there's a cyborg, like middle ground of that, which uh, certain bakeries do where they have the real food, but they paint they it in something. Yes. Which is also, you know, what, you know, commercials do too. A lot of commercials, and we're not looking at the real food. You think I, I don't know that? Come on. I've just learned the thing. About the, I feel naive that I just learned the cookie thing, the cookie pull. That when they when you see the cookie be pulled, there's something there's in the background the chocolate mm -hmm. like elastic being strung. Come on. There's uh, a lot of times for, for cereal, oh. um, so the cereal doesn't uh, doesn't like get dissolve. soggy mm -hmm. and and it's actually uh, water and glue. No. Yeah. Oh gosh. I, as you probably have seen, have done many McDonald's commercials. Is that right? We'll cut to a clip. You actually. I'm here to announce the launch of McDonald's new signature sriracha sandwich, and they decided to turn it up. 
It's topped with crispy onions, fresh baby spinach, and kale. Onions and baby cream. That's not all. They decided to turn it up even more. They created an exclusive sriracha mac sauce with just the right kick of spice. And we're back. Uh, and is this is this true that in I, my that you, they say okay, it's time to launch the burger? Do they give you that direction? I was never asked to launch, but I do have in my mm. contract to not speak to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> but they they did. Um, uh, I would do every sometimes every take, but if not two takes and takes are a, a few minutes. Sure. Um, they would come out and switch out the burger. Right. And in the back, they had a section where they were building the burger. Where there's like there's toothpicks, oh yeah, and they have the they have the the cheese pointed out a certain way, Ugh. and then uh, between takes when they didn't switch it out, they would still come over and they had a little water spray yes. bottle to spritz the lettuce and the tomato. Yes. Also, you uh, I hold would hold a sandwich probably like this. They they want four fingers on top oh. to make it look big. Like I I really need I really need to hold on to this <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. eight fingers on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how. That's how. Yeah, like uh, juicy this steak mm-hmm, is. This mm-hmm. beef, whatever it is. I don't know. Yeah, I was in a Dunkin' Donuts spot where it was the iced coffee had to be um, had to be spritzed, but it was sticky. So the whole time your hand was like like terribly sticky, and they just to make it look like there was water dripping down the side. Do we have access to this commercial? Uh, I. It was a uh, maybe. I on found my, it. Mmm, this coffee is excellent. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> I would love, I would love to uh, put that put that in, and then later see your actual commercial. commercial. And that is you know, that that was your line, and you had that accent. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, I remember being so excited. It was one of my first commercials I did, and I was so excited because I'm from Massachusetts, so it felt very... It's nice when you get to do a commercial where you're like, oh, I feel such hometown pride for this product. Is Dunkin' Donut a Massachusetts product? I don't... It's definitely East Coast. It felt Massachusetts to me, or at the very least, it was a big part of my life. It Mm -hmm. was like we went and got culottes in the summer and like Mm -hmm. egg and cheeses. Yeah. (laughs) I love Dunkin'. Sometimes when I'm like homesick in LA, I'll go to... Like, I'll just drive to Hollywood Dunkin' Donuts and get it. Just kind of a. Is that really a thing? It's because you're homesick. Yeah. And it's a conscious decision. That's yeah. sweet. Yeah, like it's some. It's just that's the beauty of chains. I think it's like you. It's it literally you walk in that door mm-hmm. and the smell is the exact same as it is across the, the country. customers are the exact. The same. customers the are the exact. Are the yeah, exact all of a sudden people. we're all kind of yeah like oh, this, yeah <laughs> this fucking weather outside it's terrible it's like so hot. I'm uh I'm from Ohio. Oh. And uh, thank you. A lot of great comedians from Ohio. I feel. I feel like there's yeah. all yeah. There's some good. There's some good Cleveland in yes, particular. A lot yes. from there. Yeah. And uh, I feel that's. I don't notice the Massachusetts people in the chains, but I do see the Cleveland type of people. Yes. So it's just like like my idea of what that stuff is. Yeah, what's your place if you had one in L.A.? That's uh, well, Ohio. For, for a while, it was a cheesecake gallery, but there was uh, also. When I was in Ohio, I didn't bring that back here. Mm. But when I go to it, and, like when I'm on the road and I'm, I see these, how to say it, I was saving it, but TGI Fridays. Wow. Yeah, yep. TGI Fridays, they all look, taste, smell the same. Exactly. Also, I've never loved it, but I do know that every time I go there, I think to myself, why don't I do this more? Yes. Applebee's. Applebee's. I just had a conversation about Applebee's the other day because when I was a teen, half price appetizers. Wait a minute, you're not still a teen? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> if Hollywood's listening, yes, I am. Oh, Rick, we're having fun. Oh, geez. Um, no, when I was a teen, we would go to Half Price Appetizers. Do you? Did you have that in your town? And mm-hmm. it was. Oh God. And do you remember the just the thrilling feeling of being there with your? I'm just getting. I'm gonna get all of them. Yes. It, it, give us one of, of each. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That was the the true taste of freedom. I still feel that way when I go. There's, there's places. Shout out to Stout Burger. Never been. I was just thinking about how do I do I do I really lean into the place and say send them this clip and be like do you guys want to advertise but yeah. I've been doing that and y- yeah you know every now and then you get a bite but you know if yeah. you want a great bite you got to go to Stout Burger <laughs> especially the Studio City one uh, Monday through Friday between four and six it's half off everything no or, or half off food oh. so I'm going I'm getting two burgers I'm getting the fries and the onion rings I, you don't have to choose. 
Well, you, not between four and six. No. And then before six happens, if I'm still there, I make sure to place another order. I don't say to go. They know it's to go. I know it's to go. But I get the burger. What am I going to eat? Three burgers? I say afterwards. I never say I have a box on a happy hour. Smart. You, you know where I go? I go, do you mind if I have a box? Like... I, I know I don't deserve a box. Yes. But I'm here. And I'm going to, by the way, I tip on the full price. Yes. I'm tipping 40% on the half off. So that's very astute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, wow. But can I tell you something else that I do on it? And I don't always do it. Try but, but can I get a barbecue sauce? Most places will say yeah. Yeah. Some places will say yeah. And then on the bill, 50 I cents. Dollar. I've been getting dollar charges. Dollar for, for BBQ? Do, not for. Not for a bowl of barbecue sauce. Not for some barbecue sauce that I could bring home and share with my friends course, and family. Of course. I'm talking, oh, this is good for a few bites on my burger. A few bites. This is I'm paying a dollar. It's not even gonna last me the whole burg. That is I, I do make it last. I, I I pour I, I do you make have it to, last. Because you have to. But it's not what everything I wanted. Of course. And also if they gave me a bowl, I I don't need this much. No. It's it, it, it's the yeah. So what I do sometimes, sometimes is my bill is Eighteen dollars. Okay, that's a four dollar tip. Sure. Now, if this were half off, that would be an eight dollar tip, right? Yes. So now I'm leaving eight dollars. You charge me a dollar for that barbecue sauce. I'm paying seven. I, I. I got a free barbecue sauce. Yep. And you got a decent tip. Yep. I've also numerous times. Okay. Left the eight dollars because good for me. Good for me. Yeah. But excuse me. Can I, but I'd let them know. May I talk to you for a second? I don't think you did anything uh, wrong. I had a lovely time here. I had a lovely burger. So and, and I will be back. Good. Yes. I do think that you should let the guests know if you're going to charge them for barbecue sauce. Because here's the thing. Like, remember when guac got such a big, like, oh, guac is extra, guac is extra. I remember where I was when it happened. Of course. We all do. Um, where were you? Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's, you know, everyone had such a big hype and- Guacamole is like a dollar extra, dollar fifty. If you're gonna put barbecue sauce in the same department, in the same you know, as avocado as, as guacamole, it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't make sense. You know what's very freeing to me? Tell me. You ever been to a bike, Chloe? Now this is a little different, a little different demo. I don't eat meat, so it's like a, a vegan place, but a nice vegan burger. I I I I eat vegan. I eat vegetarian at least two days a week. Nice. Um so I do like a vegan place. I'm interested. Yeah, bike. But Chloe. I don't know by Chloe. I've never heard of this. Well, I think this is gonna make you excited. If you could, in case this clip is something I could show them for sponsorship, could you make sure you acknowledge the home audience as well for this? Of course. Well, by Chloe, it's great that you you anything you could ever want from a fast food place, you can get no meat. It's involved. vegan fast food. Vegan fast food, but it's healthier, I suppose. But who knows if it's really you know who knows. But at the very least, there's no meat in there, and it's very thrilling for me because it's like oh, I can get you know fries and a burger or something and feel feel the feeling of being young and going through the McDonald's drive through without eating meat. But you go, you order your thing, then you go to the back, little plastic cups, as many as you can get your fingies on, and all the sauces mm-hmm. by the pump. You chipo- I'm talking chipotle ketchup, regular ketchup, mustard, some sort of like creamy dressing. You can go back as many times as you want, no, no cost. So now you're paying a dollar for one little thing of barbecue sauce. You go, oh, this it doesn't have to be this way. Mm-hmm. I've seen the other side. Mm-hmm. People that work in restaurants oftentimes don't know a business they're in. Yes. You know business people who work in restaurants oftentimes think they're in? What would you guess? The business of food. Yeah, they're not. They're not. What business are they in? They're in the service business. They're in the they're in the service business. They're in the business to make us f- happy. Yes. Whether it's with cheese steaks, cheese cakes, cheese on a stick, wheeze on a bic. Okay. It's not about any of that. It's about this, the, my 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 teeth showing up into a smile. It's a little bit about wheeze on a bick. It's a, and it is a little bit about wheeze on a We'd be remiss if we... If we I yeah. can't pretend wheeze on a bick has nothing to do with I, it. I, yeah, no, come on. I mean, yeah. I went to uh, Blue Bottle recently. I would like to talk about Blue Bottle. Glad you brought it up. Go ahead. Why? Because it's one of the greatest coffees you've ever had? Very interesting. Very interesting. If I don't make my own coffee at home, which, from Australia, much it's like Blue excellent. Bottle, I go to Blue Bottle. They have a uh, pretzel croissant. Yep. You know about it. I do. How much is it? Do you, have you looked at the price? Four seventy five. Well, mine. The one in Studio City is five bucks. Five. Yeah. Five dollars for a croissant. Have you had it? No. Nuts. I go in. Incredible. Incredible. Good? <clears throat> yes. Okay. 
So ugh. I was a little high when I ate it. Okay. So truthfully, I, I know that I was a little high during it. Yes. But also, I've been high eating other things and didn't think it was the best croissant I've ever yes. had. I go in, order my coffee. I'm about to do a podcast. Yeah. Much like this. I want to get the... Uh, I, I don't need it. Behind the counter, the woman sees me go and she's like, are you sure? I go, yeah, is it good? And she answers, honestly. Yes, it is. I've had it a few times. Okay. And this goes on for longer than I'm milking it. And I, alt- I end up leaving. Oh, God. And you're thinking about it. I go back in to take a picture of it. I'm sending it to, the, to, to my guest. Who Shout out to Bill Lawrence. You could watch that episode whenever it came out yesterday. You know, or yeah, sure. a couple of weeks ago. Yes. And uh, asking if you wanted it. Now, I got to say, I didn't get a picture of food. I, said, I got coffee or tea. I Bill, wasn't, what's I wasn't the special out. treatment here? I, well, Bill gave me a job. <laughs> and all you're giving me is a fucking bust of the, the balls, guys. Okay? It's a $5 croissant. It's a five dollar croissant. That's a big no. That's a that's a good quality mustache. Yeah, that's a also that's a tough food to eat during. I don't envy Bill because that's a tough food to eat during a podcast. We did a good job. We'll cut to a clip. So I have this pretzel croissant that I was very much wanting to try. I did wash my hands before. I'm May okay I break it? it. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. Let's uh, let's put it up. I'm very excited about this. Um, I'm going to give you the tray. I also have. No, I just want a plate. Can you put the tray away? I just want a plate. No. Why? Because you're not going to get it on the plate. All right. I also have uh, there, there's a wet napkin and a dry one because it is a little greasy. Thank you. And we're back. They did a great job. Thank you for watching. Yes. I go back in a third time and I go, I'm going to get it. I love that. I figured I sent a clip. I sent a picture to the person on the podcast. I could write this off. So this $5 croissant is now $3. Yes. That's the tax bracket I'm in, guys. Okay. All right. I'm about to pay for it. You know what she says? No, she doesn't. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. Did she say it's on me? Don't worry about it. It's on me. <laughs> I said, what? Why? She said, I see you in here all the time. It's fine. Enjoy it. It tastes better when it's free. Oh, my God. You know what I said? Thanks. A week and a half later, I'm talking about Blue Bottle on the second podcast. Look you know why? Because they serviced me. Wow. I. And now can I have a. Now I'm going to do a conspiracy theory on you. I'd rather not. And we'll be back <laughs> right after this. No, it's good. <laughs> so here's my conspiracy theory. This woman, this lovely woman, mm-hmm. she's never tried this pretzel thing. She's now, since you've gone, so she, she, she says, yeah, it's great. It's great. It tastes really good. I've tried it. You leave. She asks a coworker, hey, has anyone tried this pretzel thing? They go, that thing tastes like shit. <laughs> right? Everyone's like, oh yeah, that's bad. That one never sells. You come back. She sees you sweating. You like <laughs> run back because you're like, you told me it's good. I want to get the croissant. Now she knows in her head, this is bad. This guy's now had a whole day about this croissant because I misled him. I'm going to give it to him for free so that he thinks it tastes better than it does so that my ass isn't on the line. Had I not had this croissant, yes, I would. Here's what I would say to you: Yes, you're 100 percent correct. <laughs> there is no world where that did not happen, just like this. Yes. However, try the croissant. Incredible. Incredible. A little bit of salt. Is that what maybe the trick is? It's like the same sweet buttery croissant. I would but call it a trick because it is a pretzel croissant. It's a pretzel croissant. So of it's not. It's like that's like calling it a zebra popcorn, and is it a trick? You put some chocolate on it. No, it's by design. It's in the title. Thank you. Wow. It's so good. Yeah. But here I go running my mouth again about Blue Bottle, which is an Australian blah blah blah. Every cup of coffee they you buy, they give a pair of socks to a homeless guy, <laughs> and they're fantastic. Do you remember? every business model became that tom's it was so revolutionary it was like we give a pair of shoes to a person in need and i was like great and then next you knew it was like you know who else is doing it who bombas the only socks i will wear now at first i was doing it because they look so good but after washing them over and over and every time i put on these used socks it felt like i'm putting on a fresh pair well, Bombas, the only way they could do better is every pair I buy, they give a coffee to a homeless guy. Oh, and they, yeah. they, they, they give socks. They give socks. Okay. Yeah. yeah wow. Bombas. That's, I, I'm not, I don't have, a, I'm not a loyal sock person. So maybe I'll check it out. I, I love them. They've been since day one who I've been wanting to get to sponsor this podcast. Bombas. It's what you put on your feet. That's good. Thank you. Bombas. It's what's on the table. <laughs> it's what's on the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell me what your experience and your, your love for Blue Bottle is. So I would say I'm a huge Blue Stone fan, which is also Australian coffee, and it's uh, their uh, 
I used to really like Blue Bottle and then something happened where I felt that the coffee was a little sweet, perhaps, which maybe people like sweet, whereas Blue Stone I felt was a little like er, like a little heartier, perhaps a little earthier. Yeah, I noticed that you were going to say earthier, then you went to heartier first. Yes, because earthier is something we all say, but what does it mean? Hearty, it's like, I know what that means. I know what earthy means. Earthy, do you, have you tasted or it's Yeah. A, what, what, what is that, like lettuce bitter, or bitter? Bitter, bitter, bitter. yeah, uh, uh, the, a beet. A beet, yes. Dirt. Yes, and then that's why I said, oh, that's not, I don't want, I don't think I want to like that. No, you want something a little sweeter, a little fresher, <laughs> a little more affordable. That's why I go to Bomba's <laughs> Coffee or whatever it is. <laughs> We've just we've this whole thing is just every we've we're just selling things the whole time that no one wants. They're like, please don't mention us. Oh, what is it going to make you fucking go soft? If that's the case, Blue Chew. If you go to bluechew.com promo code shoes, you'll get a free boner. And that's a guarantee. We'll be right back. Carpet. Hardwood. Rugs. And luxury vinyl. And we're back. Oh, God. Yeah. Commercials. Yes. People don't like. I don't. Do you think? Yeah. Because what about the Super Bowl? Super Bowl comes around. Everyone loves commercials. Those aren't commercials. Those are. Those are comedy sketches. Yeah. But I would argue that almost every commercial these days is trying to be a comedy sketch. I would argue even her- harder that the most important thing in that sentence was the word trying. Trying. Totally. Because I, I which not to circle fully back, but. Well, I love circling back. Mom videos I love because I have full creative control. It's mm-hmm. literally just me deciding what to shoot, how to shoot it, and what gets in the final edit, and when I put it out, and how I put it out. It, like any t- like what do you mean e- how you put it out? Well, you know, I I used to work for a company where like you know a digital company, and it's like it was all about when like when we put it out and which wh- where are we going to lead and how are we going to mark like are we going to lead on YouTube or we'll start there are we going like, to gotcha. so it's it was very freeing to be like oh, I can just do whatever I want I can put uh-huh. it out at three a.m. it doesn't whereas it's like oh the stats say that Tuesday at one p.m. is when you have to put it or something like that you yeah. know but I feel like commercials is the epitome of so many cooks in the kitchen it's like. Maybe the idea started as funny, but then, you know, your like boss comes in and then the people within your company edit it. And then now like the advertising agent, what like, mm-hmm. and then the consu- the product and it's like you, ha- and then the director, it's like you have like five different people trying to fight for what's funny. And then that's when, you know, it just becomes a watered down sketch. Yeah. Sketches are hard on their own when they're not trying to sell a product. Totally. I think sketches is the hardest medium of comedy. Agreed. Do you do you think that? Yeah, because it's like uh, I mean, tr- sketch in the traditional sense, yeah. I think is is very hard. Yeah, like SNL. Yeah, it's very very hard. You have to cl- open and close That's right. something. It has to end on something. You only have so much time to dive into it. There's yes. only you, you're usually playing one game, which means not only does the game have to make sense, you have to have people that are funny people. Those funny people have to have that skill set, and it's just like. Then and you have to catch people's attention quickly before they like change to something else. And it has to be something we haven't seen before. Yeah. When by design, these things are so fast and there's so many we've seen it all. Yeah. Key and Peel, did you watch that? Yeah. I thought they were so good. Yeah, they were incredible. But sketch is tough, and you do improv. Sort of. I kind of started with improv and stand. I started with improv, and I did stand up, and then I sort of like landed on sketch. So sketch is my favorite, um, but I still live perform stand up. When did you move from uh, Massachusetts to LA? I a little I went Massachusetts and I went to college in Vermont and then I moved. Did you study? Uh, I studied psychology at Middlebury. What am I thinking right now? Uh, you still have to poop, even though you pooped a little bit before. Is that a psychology thing or is that body language? <laughs> is that body, was that body language? <laughs> yeah, this is my psych yeah. degree. You're yeah. What um, am I thinking right now? <laughs> <laughs> So you study psychology and you moved here at 22? Nope. Moved to New York at 22. Uh, I was like a financial consultant while trying to take improv classes. So I was a financial consultant. I mean, honestly, it's crazy that I was a financial consultant. I was a psychology major, Spanish minor. I knew nothing about economics. You look Spanish, but you're Greek? Yeah. Isn't that wild? And, I, and I'm fluent in Spanish. But so I, yeah, I, people think I'm Spanish a lot. Can I hear you say, uh, if you like... Uh, Take your shoes off. Go to ricklassman.com to check out some merch in Spanish. Si te gusta, take your shoes off. Debes ir a donde? www.ricklassman.com. Para qué? What? For what? Mm-hmm. Great. Bueno. Ya está. Y 
si de nuevo no, no sé lo que acabo de decir, no sé este website, no sé lo que quería decir él, pero ahora estamos hablando, él no sabe lo que estamos diciendo. Si hablas español, solo estamos juntos nosotros, George y yo hablamos español. Great, so that's it. To be, tr to be honest, I tried to like, like, kind of like, like do like a dig, like a drag in Spanish no, I, during it, but I don't think I really pulled it off. Well, I, I, I understand Spanish. Oh, okay. Um, and I must ash. Um, that also looks Spanish. <laughs> Spanish I was yeah. going to say at first Greek. If the, if the eyebrows were the other way, that would be more. Yeah, if, yeah, it's, I know. But wait, there's more. Yes. You uh, you go to New York, financial consultant. Basically, those I want to know what that, why you got into financial consulting when you wanted to. Do, I'm assuming you wanted to do comedy. Yeah, when you I wanted moved to do comedy, but I I didn't. You know, I wanted a job, and I was like the only jobs that my college seemed to be getting people were like like consulting jobs and finance jobs. I don't know really why, but I I yeah got this job consulting, but it was really kind of acting in a way because it was like you would go into these companies and tell them how to run their business better and. That's acting. Like, I was acting the whole year. I had no idea what I was saying. I had no clue what I was doing. This sounds like an EPK right now. A what? Yeah. That sounds... The, 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 like, the, to, to say that you were acting going into the sales job totally. is really like... I don't know right now if I'm feeling like, come on, or if I'm feeling like, yeah, that's good. I, I, I truly you believe truly that felt every like single part, while you're in there, I I'm practicing I, acting. I just feel like everyone who's a consultant is acting because you can't possibly be 22 and go into Coca-Cola and confidently, yeah, that's great. confidently know more than these people. So your goal is just to like, to kind of like, you can't, you just got there. So I realized like everyone is kind of like everyone at the company is like, that's your whole job is to kind of like, you know, just act like, you know, Could you think that. of any specific examples of something that you literally had to consciously be acting? I mean, honestly, the whole thing, because I, I didn't know finance. So it was like a terrifying, like, I, I just remember being terrified all the time. Like, it because I, it was like highest stakes acting because it's like you're, you were like, if anyone asked a question that you didn't know the answer to, I just felt like, oh, I could, they, they I, my, my spot could be blown at any moment. So you can never break here. So it's like you're on right. in a very important episode of Punked. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you have exactly, to just commit exactly. to this for eight months or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I know a lot of corporations, um, they go on uh, improv class retreats mm -hmm. and improv improvisers like teach corporate people how to do improv. And It really made me see the world differently like and be like, oh, I don't think anyone... Cool. Like, I don't know how many adults really know what they're doing. It's just kind of like you just gain more confidence. And because by year or, you know, I only did it for a year, but by month six, you do get better because you're like, oh, I I've at least gotten this question before. Even if I don't know the root of like why profit is like going to be like whatever the obscure thing was, it was just memorization. So it was like, even if I didn't understand why it was happening, it's like, oh, I'd been in this situation before. So it's like, oh, yeah. And that's how people get to know more things. It's just like, oh, you faked it for two years and then, yeah, <coughs> the faking it led to knowing it, actually. So it was cool. I mean, I, I liked the job. It was it was cool and like, I felt it was thrilling because I was always on edge. How do you, how are you doing comedy during that? You're doing it at night? Or you wait until you finished? I was very like, not doing stand-up yet. Like, I was just taking classes. So I would just take, I took UCB like one through four. In New York? In New York. And then when I quit, I was like... Do you like, take any classes with anybody that's still doing comedy that you know? Yeah, definitely. I was like opening for um, uh, James Adomian and Anthony Atamanik. Do you know those guys? Mm -hmm. They're so funny. They do Bernie versus Trump. They're like incredible impressionists. And Anthony Atamanik was my first teacher ever at UCB. And so, yeah, he's... yeah. He's, Are you guys friends now? Yeah. Now we're friends. And who else? Um, Aubrey Tabak I'm friends with. Yeah, almost, almost... I just did a show last night with like a bunch of New York improvisers who... Yeah, people are still. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I went through UCB, and there's a few people that I know now from, and I just think it's like, it's it almost feels like at this point it was like, oh, remember back in college? Totally. When like, and now who's still doing? The, who's still playing basketball or whatever? Totally. But I'm sorry, go on. You you took no, no, UCB. Yeah, and then I you know I quit my job and was kind of like yeah, improv's like fun, but I don't know if yeah, and I just started doing stand up because I was like I don't know where this is gonna quite. How go. long have you been doing stand up? And then. 
it's it's been like a on and off journey since 2014 something like that but you know my dad got sick and so like once my dad got like probably a year later my dad got sick so i moved home to take care of him mm. and then when i when he passed i came back and i was just like i can't do like i don't want to do this anymore i'm like in a lot of pain and i don't want to be like bombing oh, i don't want to oh that's okay thanks but it was just like i'd been through so much like pain i was like why would i so so stand up was was more pain i would say stand up in order to do stand up you have to be okay with the pain you have to be you have to know you're gonna bomb you have to know that like some sets aren't gonna go well and that's not a personal attack and you just got to keep going and i was too fragile to like even fathom that happening mm. so i started doing that's when i started doing sketch because i was like i still want to do comedy but i don't want to be I mean, sketches you're not on a tight wire you you're not on a tight wire. You're, you're you're it's pure joy it's like this is the fun of it and i don't have to worry if someone's laughing or not if i think this is funny then great i had fun doing it and i put it out if how's that different than stand up stand up i see it i feel it i feel the them not laughing right there videos it's like maybe you comment or maybe you just oh, don't when watch. you say sketch you don't mean live sketch pardon me yeah like uh, I, I wasn't doing live comedy for a while because right. i was just like i can't deal with the the you know immediate rejection or the immediate you know yeah and that's gone now that's pretty much gone now but i will say i still am much i still like have a lot more fun doing like acting and sketch comedy than live comedy yeah i used to like live comedy but if i if yeah, if I had to choose, it would I would just do. Do you think you could be very good at live comedy? Um, I think I think live comedy maybe takes. A, I think you have to be really okay with that part of. You have to not take it personally when things don't go well, and I don't know if that's in my bones. So I think even if I like even the best don't do well sometimes. So I don't. I think like in order to be great at comedy, you really have to be. A fighter and you have to be okay with like yeah the, does, the, some people s start with those bones but many people could build those bones yes maybe i could build i those think bones. you'd be great thanks i mean it's uh it's uh a different craft yes but it's you're a performer yes you know yeah. and uh if you could do that if you could do that then you could do that Totally. You know? Yeah. Because um, I have, I would be curious to see your, I mean, like I, after watching that, I would want to watch your stand up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting thing too, because I started doing stand up and I kind of found my voice before I was doing like goofy sketches. Uh -huh. So my, they're like a little, it's like a little different. Um, but you're so locked in to your relationship with the idea of your mom. Yes. I mean, your mom too, but I'm saying yes. like your version of that. So I just feel like built in, there's such a strong point of view yeah. about what that what does that like why is that funny to you is it funny to you because that sounds just like your mom or is it funny to you because your mom thinks that way does your mom not think that way and that's your version of how you know what i'm saying and right yeah I, yeah I, I think it's a very cathartic thing because just like yeah yeah i just spent a lot of time with my mom so it's like these uh yeah whenever what's your relationship like with your mom that you spend a lot of time with her you know my it's just like a tough thing with like losing a parent you just become like it's like it, so this happened this is with your Later yeah. in your life, you spent yeah. a lot of time with your mom. Yes, yeah, um, because you know, once he passed, my mom was, um, I moved home for a year, so we were all kind of together for a year, and then once, yeah, he, my mom moved to New York to be with me once he passed, because we live in the suburbs, so it was like, my dad died in that house, it was just like dark, so she came to live with me in New York, and now she still lives in New York. So we were spending, we were, you know, in the same apartment together, and it was like a constant, nonstop time together. How long did you guys live together? I would say like... the the first year after my dad died, it was on and off. She would go back to the suburbs and then she'd come stay. And you moved to New York a year later? Right, yeah. Like I the, mean, excuse honestly, me, LA. The, oh, and then LA, I, <clears throat> no, no, like three years after that. I, I, so then, yeah, I worked at a digital place. I started doing, like I, I lived in New York for a few years And after. you're not, so you take, you're taking UCB class, but you're still doing other jobs. Uh, yeah, I was waitress, I was waitressing for a while. I was in the service of, of, yeah, people, making people smile for a while, yeah. I, well, once I quit my consulting job, I waitressed at The Butcher's Daughter for like two or three years. And then I worked at Condé Nast making videos. And after that job, that's when I started making a lot of videos on my own. And once that sort of was happening, then I moved to LA. So you moved to LA because of making sketch videos. Yeah. And my reps were all out here and they were like, there's, you want to be acting? There's more stuff out here. Come on out. So what's the, what's the dream job? Is it sketch? No, I don't think it's sketch. I think it's probably, I, I would love sketch, but I think the dream job is just uh, being able to uh, act comedically all the time. So yeah, that's what sketch does that, too. What does that mean? 
I mean, sitcoms. Yeah, I'd movies. be very happy on any of. I, I I did like a dramatic feature this summer, and I was like unbelievably happy. I Do felt people so, see it? Uh, not yet. No, I don't think it's out yet. I happen to get a little piece. So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise, with more than 50 years as a family-owned business, we've got you covered. Sorry, we didn't, it's, it's, it's didn't the, find it's the it. rug store again. Yeah, yeah I'm just, I, at the time when I did this, I thought maybe I would ask you to send me a trailer. Can I get a little? And I didn't realize how difficult it would be. I didn't realize what was going to happen at the very end of this. And again, I am sorry that happened. <laughs> but uh, yes, I put it in my dad's rug store. Um, yeah, but then also, you know, when I'm when I'm doing those mom videos or something like if I could be on a sitcom but I, I, I so feel SNL is not that, that it for you I auditioned for SNL a couple of times so I I, I would have it would have did you get to go in, in front of Lauren I did yeah and it was great and twice uh, nope just once I went in front of Lauren and then once, when, when what year was that uh two years ago I think now the time in LA I feel is so I'm I'm very I have a bad grasp on it but I think two years ago and you, you don't think you'll do, do it again I might I might but I think uh when I yeah, I just think uh, at a certain point I was like, I'm not gonna like fixate on this. Like, I'm just gonna uh -huh. keep. I'm gonna widen my. Yeah. Would you tell me with the process of getting the first audition before getting to Lauren what that was like doing mm -hmm. it? Yeah, I was. So I didn't. I didn't have like. I, I had commercial reps only at the time, and I was. Uh, Sorry. Yep. Mmm, this coffee is excellent. <laughs> and we're back. Um, yeah. So. I got a call from my commercial agent being like, hey, so this is crazy, but I, you, like, if you, SNL wants to see you, they want to see you showcase. And I, I mean, I, I think it was like a week, I had done a lot of online videos. I had not done a lot of characters on stage yet. And they were like, SNL wants to see you showcase next week at UCB. So I, I remember being very excited and then fully panicked because I was like, I don't, I don't do, I have never done characters on stage. So for like a week, I just tried to write characters on stage and I showcased. And then after I showcased, I was flying out to LA because my boyfriend's family's from here. So I like got on a plane and I flew out here and I landed very like movie. I landed and I had a voicemail from my agent being like, call me back. And I called her back and she's like, SNL wants you to come in and screen test. Uh, you have to come back. So I didn't, right away. didn't leave the airport, got, got back on a different plane. Went back and I should and I. How'd that flight home back feel? I I I was like wired and you, I call, just, you called your boyfriend first. I was with my boyfriend. So oh, sorry, my boyfriend lives in New York as well. Got gotcha. you. So, so you both flew out we here. We both flew out here. He goes to his parents. Yep. And I. And you go. Sorry, babe. I yeah. got to see you about a girl. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And he he's excited. He was excited. It was a very like yeah. We were both just very excited and. That's nuts. Okay. And I'll say at that point, I was probably more calm because they were like, just do what you did in the showcase at the screen test. Whereas before the showcase, I was like, I kept being like, should I, is this the right call of characters I should do? Should I do different mm -hmm. characters? And then once, once they were like, just do what you did at the screen test, I was kind of like, okay, now it's just go time. I just have to, you know, do that again. So when, and you're flying back, you know, when you do it, I'm do, you do it tomorrow? I knew what day, but they didn't tell me what time until, you know, the day of. Okay. So how many days was it later? I think two, two or three. You're flying home. You have two or three days. Yep. And they tell you at what time the day of? The day of, they told me the time. So you woke up. I woke up at like six, I think. Because I don't want to miss this I call. Don't, exactly. I just, and then at, at ten, they send you a text saying it's at four or something. No, I think it was late. I think I, I think if I remember correctly, I think it was later in the day. I got a text. Be I think they were like, we think it's going to be later. My agent was like, we think it's going to be later. And eventually, I found out it was like seven or eight. I had to go in p.m. So they said, just keep this whole day open. When I tell you, I didn't eat for like I. I when I get nervous, I like I can't eat. I Same. was shake like I have I have never felt that <laughs> disaligned with my body in my life, where it was just like I physically couldn't eat. Yeah, I, I've never eaten more. I went to Viselka right after the screen test. I ate. I don't. I ate so fast and so. So you didn't eat anything up until eight p.m. I, pro I probably tried like protein bars and stuff, but it was just I. I gotta tell you and you all from experience. Yes, I know your body feels that way. You gotta. You eat. gotta eat some bread and an apple. Try you gotta do something because it's gonna get in, the, get in your it way. Gets, it's gonna get in yeah. your way, yeah. Um, but then, yeah, I screen tested. It was like a really exciting, cool experience. I felt very lucky. I'm like, oh, this is well, this is very cool. And you go in, and what? You're on stage. There's five people in the audience. No, there was more. There's like a fair amount. There was an audience. Yeah, there's like I want to say. I think like 20. Yeah. But I remember the panic of being like, oh, shoot, I didn't even think, should I be playing a camera or should I be playing to the audience? What did you do? 
camera. I, I, Did they tell you to do that? I remember, I think an agent, or an agent or a friend. I got to share my dressing room with a friend, so that was kind of nice. Yeah. And you, you end up getting there, and you're like, oh, it's all my friend. Like everyone, who, I, we all knew each other. It's yeah, like, oh, so, here, yeah. here we are. It's my understanding that you, because your your job is to do it to camera, and whatever your job is, they want to see you do your job, exactly. not see you perform for them. Exactly. And I, I, um, yeah. So I, you know people that are there, but you didn't know who was going to be there. I didn't know who was going to be there. And then you auditioned. Did you get any laughs? I, I think I got a few laughs, but I don't, I feel like everyone was like, yeah, we got a few laughs. Like, I think they're, they're consensus was it's a few laughs. Yeah, it's like a nice, it's FLR. not as, it's not as like, I was expecting it to be like no one's, but I, they were, they were nice. It was nice. Everyone was friendly and any feedback. No, no, I didn't get, I don't think I got any feedback. I just uh, didn't get it, <laughs> which is the feedback, <laughs> but it was, yeah. And I think once that happened, I was very much like, oh, I can like relax i did it they saw me if they didn't want me that's okay it whereas versus the feeling of like if they could only see me then it would be you know i do so yeah have, did you ever screen test no okay no i've screen tested but never for snl yeah yeah i've screen tested for everything i've ever gone in for totally i once when i came to la i learned oh screen test doesn't just mean snl because in New York, I'm like screened. If you say you screen test, I feel like that's yeah. like SNL. Whereas here, it's like yeah, you screen test for everything. Well, a lot of a lot of jobs, they're actually they're they're ta th there's a difference between like testing for something and a screen test. You're still acting and auditioning, but the screen test is like you're doing the performance. Yeah. Um, other actors are involved with TV stuff. I've done that sometimes, but other times this is a test. It's just a, the same exact audition that I've done four times. Yeah. But now it's kind of like a nicer curtain. Yes. And there's a lavalier mic. Yeah. yeah but it's yeah. the same exact thing. Yeah. yeah and they yeah. want to watch you do it again with a lavalier mic. Exactly. And my thoughts are do it lavalier mic the entire From time. The beginning. Yeah. So you could see me doing it, not having a panic attack. I know. I, I know. I, I, I think that with everything, like, why don't we just, can't we just go in once can't that because yeah once i'm going in four times it's like oh god now you got me nervous now i you can taste it mm -hmm. yeah so i have a i love go i love auditioning so much me too it's You're like the lottery it. well it's like the lottery yeah it's like fun it's like uh yeah but th to me i shine in between the scenes i can see that Thank you. Yes. Also, it's the the most insulting thing, but yes, it's true. <laughs> oh yeah, when it, the camera's off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I bet you're great. Once I'm sure the, you're fun with the I'm throw sure you're fun with it. Yeah. <laughs> but how do you get? Uh, you know, you want people to like you, and then oh, she's good. I like her. Yeah. You know, so it's easy to like somebody that you already like. Yes. You know. So you want to get people to like you, but you also don't want to make them like you. Yeah. So you got to be kind of. And it's, I find it's such a dance. Like I intentionally now when I'm going in for a character that is a bigger, goofier energy, I will come in almost nervous. Like I'll come in. I will not be making a lot of eye contact. Um, I'm not going to say anything unless they ask me something. I'm not going to be cold. But it's just once we start, I don't want that. I want to see that. Oh, he could make this happen. Yes, I love that. A and vice versa. A lower energy thing. I, I want to come in. So there's I'm, I'm I don't think it's. I'm calculating it a lot. Interesting. And I think that on tape, you only see this thing. I don't know who he is. And you have to know who the person is a little yeah. that doesn't show off camera. So I feel that I am better with context. So what I like about a test is the producers are in the room. The yeah. director's in the room. So they could see that. Uh, but they only see that after they've seen this tape. Yes. So I struggle. How do I... How do I how do I show in tape? I almost want to in the tape at the beginning be like, let me call action. <laughs> you know, totally what I mean? like you would do the banter like you would do in the room almost, and then call action. Yeah, yeah. yeah you walk in. Yeah. But uh, go ahead. Do you mean self tape? Is that what you're talking about, or do you mean tape? Because self tape, I think that's where there's like, no one can get mad at you, so like you can add some. What do you mean? Who would get mad at you? Well, sometimes if I I I. Uh, I think I get in trouble, not in trouble, but I get the note almost always of like, duh, from, do, do from, less. From agents or production? Ca from casting directors. Right. Yeah. So I feel yeah, the like- Yeah, do less is a, is a is uh, something I learned late in life, but- That's a signature. I get that almost always. Yeah. You, do you still? All the time. Do you know why they say do less? Yeah. Because it, it ain't theater. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. Yeah, but it's- I don't fully take the their side. But like, the, you know, the camera doesn't, you, you don't need to do that much for the camera to pick up. But it's hard when your bones oh, are like... Oh, do less. Uh, for whatever reason, because I'm thinking about 
like slate it, like saying, hello, this is me. This is how tall I am. You're talking about the actual audition. I'm talking about the actual Obviously. audition. Obviously. Of course. Why am I thinking otherwise? Okay. Yeah. So your acting is too much. I would say, you know, I, I more often than not would get the note of like, fun, let's... Mmm, this coffee is excellent. But that being said, so I, I think it's like when they want bit, like it's just sometimes maybe like, oh, that's maybe just not the right thing for me. That's not like, you know. Do you ever audition for multicams? Yeah. You ever get too much for a multicam? Yeah. No. <laughs> I promise. But it was fine because it was like a collaborative thing. It was like, it wasn't like a, an admonishing. It was like, oh, let's try, we want to try this as like very, uh, we want to try this as natural, even though it's multicam. I want to watch all of it. I yeah. want to watch all your stuff. <laughs> You're so in the pocket with that stuff. I want to see it so much. You too. Oh, I'll send you some stuff. Great. <laughs> but I put it. You're real. I put it like an eight minute uh, thing of me. When you come back, I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm jerking off watching it. <laughs> I, I I mean I know my body's not the same, but I I, I was I'm still just as fun, you know, or whatever. <laughs> And then, and then it just cuts to erection by what was the thing you said? What blue, was the thing? Blue Chew. <laughs> yeah, Blue Chew. There's a lot out there. Cialis is Viagra. What's great about Blue Chew is Blue Chew offers <laughs> both medicines. It's the only FDA approved yada 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 promo code shoes. You know, I did a Blue Chew ad once. We'll cut to a clip, <laughs> show the whole commercial. That is the commercial for it. And they uh, uh, they gave me a promo code shoes because they were seeing how many of Rick's. Take your shoes off, goblins, mm. are going to go and buy some of these dick pills. We know whoever typed in shoes. And I, this isn't called the shoes podcast. No. It's the shoes off, off. podcast. Yeah. Could we make the promo code shoes off? They said, we think less. Is more. That's my version. That's your version. You know, a little too much. Even even my promo codes are too much. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> um, yeah. No, I like auditioning. Because, yeah. And I, and I think like, oh, uh, yeah, once you get to yeah, once you have directors, I like to like it's nice to get notes. It's hard sometimes when you're like flying blind. You're like I'm just kind of taking a shot at what I think this is. Whereas once you're in the room, it's nice. You're like oh yeah, well let's work on this together because that's what it would be like on set. You know? I have a little perspective for you. Oh. Not liking this idea of oh I'm just taking a shot at something. Like you said, you were more comfortable going back. They already said do this. Yes, I see the value in that. But also, if you realize that. Your job is literally to just throw something out there. Yes, it's it's comforting for me to know, like, oh, this I'm I'm not trying to figure something out. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, which happens to be trying to figure something out. That's true. And a lot of people don't. Yeah. Uh, back to the uh, croissant Bill Lawrence episode, which came out a week or two or three ago, is uh, he's a do you know Bill Bill Lawrence is a show creator. He created Scrubs. He created oh, wow. the show. Cool. Uh, a network show that I was on called Undateable. Cool. And he knows this world very, very well. Yes. We talked about in the episode how much I enjoyed auditioning for him. I was new and how he gives you all the takes, gives you all the, don't worry about it. We yes. talk for a little bit first. I, if you don't like a take, stop whenever you want. Ugh. All that stuff. That's going to get the best read out of a lot, especially 100%. comedians who are all like in our heads and shit. If you start being rude or like not rude, but cold, I'm going right. to shut down. Anyway, go on. Um, work on that. Yeah. And but Bill was saying he was giving uh, it talked about Chandler and and the reason that Chandler does the way he does it is he's according to Bill, he wanted to make his audition stand out and he just made a random weird choice. And it may work, it may not work. But if you don't make a choice, it's boring. You know what I mean? That's kind of how I feel. That's kind of how I feel is like, uh, yeah, I would rather go in that direction than in the than in the other. Yeah. yeah. Chandler, uh, God, I've just started watching Friends for the first time, and he is a remarkable performer. I mean, I know it's like not new news, but I'm just like, he sells every joke, he lands every joke, he finds a way. It's like very impressive to watch him. Jennifer Aniston, David Schwimmer, and uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah, Joey. Yeah, but what's his name? Uh, uh, Jesus. Matt, Matt, Matt Le LeBlanc. No, LeBlanc. Not Matt LeBlanc, who's uh, the whole cast. The is, whole cast, yeah. And there's one in particular who I'm, and I can't say. Because I want to get her on the podcast, oh, yeah. or him, or him on the podcast. But one of them is I—I I, I don't see it. Um, so funny that that's the one you want on your podcast. <laughs> it's the one I have access to. <laughs> the other ones I'd be too intimidated. Uh, Matthew Perry. Now I'm like looking back. I'm like, oh, is that why I got on this? You're like, yeah. Well, she's not. We couldn't get your mom. 
<laughs> also, when you said Matt, I said no, because it's not Matt LeBlanc, but it is Matthew Perry. Matthew and you Perry. could have been saying Matt Perry, but I don't think that's what you were no, thinking. No, because we had already said Chandler. We, he was already established. Right. So I thought we were going through the cast because I think, yeah, yeah. But the show's fantastic. The show's fantastic. The show's fantastic. Yeah, I feel, yeah, like a lot of appreciation watching it now at, to be like, oh, that's a multi That is in front of a live audience. That is like, you are working, you're working for those laughs. Maybe the people have heard that joke in the audience three times. And so you have to do something different to sell it this fourth time or now, whatever. Now that's live sketch. That's live sketch. Would that's- you rather do it in front of a live studio audience or would you rather do it with no audience? I, w- I think it would be really fun to do live studio. I think that feels like a nice sweet spot where it's like you get the live performance, but also it's, you know, you still have room to, yeah. to like Seinfeld. Yeah, I just think that's the that's the dream probably is multicam because you get the best of both worlds. I did a multicam for a few years. Really? And it was some of the coolest, <sighs> coolest, the, the, the job itself. The hours are short. Yes. Going to the same place. You're not in trailers. You have dressing rooms because you're there. Yes. The product itself, I was, to me. It's hard. It's hard to make it great. Yeah. Yeah. It's also not. Yeah. So to me, the dream job, as far as the art is concerned, I want to do. I will like single camera yes. acting, put some fucking music under me. Totally. You know what I mean? Like, like look into my eyes. Yeah. 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 You yeah. know, have, have it be, uh, have it be a little. I, I, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'll just, I'll, um, yes. Okay. I'll keep you posted. All right. Thank you. Bye. I'm sorry. Uh, mustache, please. Yes. Thank you. Um, we're going to do that again. Don't you, you you're going to, you get it coming to, to, to this. Okay. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay. Thank you so much for handling. I'll see you soon. Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Uh, baby. Oh, 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 it's happening. Sorry. What's happening? Okay. Um, I'm so- I, I'm sorry. This mustache isn't sticking. Then this is why it's important. This is we why- should just cut back. We should keep three of these bad ones. You know in what? Fuck it. Let's just back. go back. <laughs> You guys want to see more? You're going to check out my Patreon. No, I don't have a Patreon. I mean, if I'm watching this podcast, if I'm watching this podcast, I want to see that scene. That's the thing. So I'm sorry, but you have to understand th- this is what happens yeah. when you buy a cheap mustache. That's right. And that's why I am proud to say we have a new sponsor, Hollywood Toy and Costumes. I don't go to Hollywood Toys and Costumes to get my props. I go to Hollywood Toys and Costumes to become, to transform. To transform. <laughs> my props that's right and do something i become that's which right. is a mom a dad anything that i want so yeah at some point uh i would love to see that scene so what i like to ask my glassman boppers out there my tyso goblins which one are you leave a comment below why don't you decide film a sketch with you and you or you and somebody else that is this scene and uh i'll repost it <laughs> Probably, if you tag me, yes. At least tag the at sh- shoes off pod, yes. Because at Rick Glassman, if it's not great, I can't repost. Of course. Where can we find you on Instagram? At Alyssa Limp, A L Y S S A L I M P on Twitter and Instagram. Good. Yeah. How did this go? So fun. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This was so fun. Thanks for having me. It was easy. It was easy. I didn't get much out of the uh, the interviewing process as much as the playing thing. Yes. Uh, yeah. Which is fun. I think that's yeah. I I have I've wanted to lean out of interviewing yeah. and more into conversation. Yes. But when I don't really know a person, right? I can't guarantee a conversation. True. I I, could, I can't. I could. I'm. I will. You will. I have. Yes. And I was right. Yes. Luckily. Yes. But you don't know. You so don't you're, know. You're you, coming over. Yeah. I'm planning on asking you. You know, what's your favorite food? Right. Which is pop chips. It's sad. Pop it's chi- dark. That my favorite food is pop chips. It is pop chips, right? Yeah. Would you mind doing pop a, chips? Could As, you could you give a little? Uh, pop chips is my favorite food. I eat them too much, and you, if you want to sponsor this podcast, I it would be my. I would come to your house and get free pop chips all the time. Yeah. Oh God, I love pop chips. You know what? I I, I do want to say. Oh my God. I don't have pop chips. Oh, devastating. What do we have, though? This is exciting. This looks like something I'll like. Anything in a pouch, I'm in. 
Yeah. Seriously. Uh, anything in a bag, pouch, sack. That's my type of if, food. If I were ever to be broken up with, should she put the breakup letter in a pouch? Yes. I'm thinking to myself, this was fun. Yes. Yes. If it's in a mixed, a mixed, uh, yeah, anyway. Mixed what? Greens, something. Oh, because no. if you're going to say mixed fruit, I would recommend split. Wow. Split, it all came together when a chef, chef. Chef. <laughs> <laughs> When a chief... <laughs> oh, that's right. When a, when a chief. <laughs> Thank you. When a chief and a nutritionist teamed up to combine two great tastes in one fast pack for pure, delicious energy, splitnutrition.com. Now, I'm not sponsored by Split. Really? But you have these... These seem like some someone sent these to you. These don't seem purchased. Well... These seem, these seem gifted. It's funny that you said gifted. Why don't you take a look under your chair? No. No. Yeah. Split nutrition. It all came together when a chief and a nutritionist teamed up to combine two great tastes in one fast pack for pure, delicious energy. Cashew butter, almond butter, peanut butter. I don't actually think there's... Uh, yeah, there is almond butter. Oh, my God. What's great about this is sometimes I want a peanut butter sandwich. Yes. Usually, actually, it's an almond butter sandwich. Yes. I don't eat peanuts. Yes. I don't... I gotta go. We gotta go. Or it's this, or the, they got the hydrogenated oils. Oh, jeez. What I do is I take one of these split packs, a chief and a nutritionist, yada yadas, with a bunch of guys and a whole bunch of things, man. Oh, my God. And then you could put this on some gluten-free toast. That's what I'm talking about. You could put this on some pita chips, and grease. Can I, can I say something crazy? I bet you could just <laughs> slurp it right out the bag. That's what's so great about split. That's what's so great about split. So yeah, they did send me these, but I'm not sponsored by them. My, uh, one of my one of my one of my very good friends, Lamorne Morris. Shout out to Lamorne. We'll cut to a clip. Uh, you ain't gonna keep me down on the ground. Guess what? I stand up, 100 percent, Jack. And I ain't taking that back. Oh, put it in a Louis Vuitton duffel if you want to. Huh? Put it on the conveyor belt if you want to. Huh? When you land at your destination, huh? Guess what? Huh? I rise. <laughs> <laughs> no more bag. <laughs> Cause I'm sly. Stole it. Took it. <laughs> Can't not take it. <laughs> Cause it's mine now. And we're back. Lamar and I were just on a, a, a scripted podcast together. He's so funny. So funny. What he, was the podcast? It, it's not out yet, so I don't. It's a. What's a scripted podcast? It's like a. a That's script. just a book on tape. Yeah, kind of, but a comedy, like a scripted. Yeah. Like but, sketches. It's so, so, sort of like a, a narrative. Uh, so it's not really sketches. It was like a long narrative comedy. I'm picturing like if it, doing this, but scripted. Like have a, that's oh actually God, really that's funny. That's so funny. If it were like, if it were just, yeah. if, it were, if it were scripted, but in a conversational way. That, that's such a funny idea. If not just for the first five minutes of every podcast, if I have a dialogue, you know, of, so tell me, and where you from, and have them answer questions that some of them may not even be where are you exactly from is right. scripted. Yeah, yeah, you have to. You, yeah, no, no. This is like you know a story, but yeah, he's so deeply talented. Also, New Girl. That's another sitcom that's just like wow. Those characters were all so so good, so good, and so original. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, he, he put he's part of this uh, this brand, and he pushes it a lot on his Instagram. And I loved the idea of it, and I reached out to them and said I love the idea of this, and uh, they said you want some stuff. And smart move split because now I, this is the end of this podcast, but it is great. Wow, that is so exciting. Yeah. yeah, this is yeah, this is very like I'm very into nutrition, and this is the way to go because you don't want to just eat fruit on your own. But if you're eating fruit or sugar with like a nut or a fat, then it's it you're you you digest it better. You don't want to eat, now. I know you don't want fruit juice because it's not attached to any fiber, but, but fruit on its own. Fruit on its is, own, yeah. If, there, if why don't you want it? If there's fiber, you know, it's fine. But even like an apple is like there's just so much sugar. Even though there's fiber, it's like if like berries on their own are fine, but like even an apple or a pear, there's so much sugar that like you do want to pack it with with some sort of fat or protein to make your body not turn it into sugar right away. You heard it here first. Berries are fine. Berries but are great. Apples and pears. Fuck off. My name's Rick Glassman. Oh, did you plug all your all yeah, your that's it. Your Insta limp. Yeah, come find me on but, there. Oh, but I said Instagram. That's the same as Twitter. Same as Twitter. You can see videos on there where I'm touring, all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh I guess all I could say now is scoot doob. Sorry, hold on one sec. Hello? That's amazing. Thank you. It was um what that was I my agent <laughs>
I'm auditioning I, for Saturday Night so, Live. Well, I guess maybe you have to split. Got to get out of somewhere fast and you're hungry? No problem. Grab a split pouch. It's got one half almond butter, one half blueberry, and you suck on those, and it's the best way to digest a little protein and a little sugar. This has been Rick Glassman's pod. Take your shoes off. <laughs> Music. Scoop. Perfect. Do. That's so fun. Perfect. blue. Scoop. D. Oh, yeah. So while Rick's gone, I'd like to take the time to say, look, I know what I said about the rug gallery. I have never been. I don't think I can actually speak accurately to it. I hope the rugs are good, but I I don't want to send you somewhere without actually vetting it. Oh, he's coming.